we are now in the future, which means AI assisted programming is the next big thing. Ever since ChatGPT has come into our lives, AI has just boomed in the market. We are now transitioning from typing code manually to becoming AI assisted programmers. So I just want to explore a bit of Copilot with you guys in this video. And as AI gets more and more powerful, I'm going to start incorporating it more and more in my tutorials because the future is using AI assistance. As a programmer, it's important we understand how things work so we can glue the blocks of code together, but actually writing the code should be done by the AI. Now, if you've used ChatGPT or any kind of AI already, you might already know that it does create a lot of errors and it's really hard to get the specifications that you are looking for but that doesn't mean it is useless. We're just in the middle of the transition from going from no AI to completely AI assisted programming. Anyway, GitHub has developed one that works very well. It's called Copilot and it costs about 10 bucks per month. Although you can get the free trial for 30 days. And that's what I did because I thought, okay, I want to learn what this actually does before I jump into it fully. And there are some free alternatives such as tab nine, which gives you a free version, which is quite cool. It gives you a lot of time to experiment with this AI assistant and it works both in Visual Studio Code and PyCharm. So if you want to play around with this, I would recommend starting with tab nine, otherwise get the Copilot free trial. But let's explore a bit how the Copilot assistant actually works. So to get started, let's create a sample function. Let's say def get current date. And as you can see, it's already giving us a simple solution. If we tap on enter, it's going to give us the date time dot date time dot now. Now we can even get more specific than that. We can provide a doc string and we can say gets the current date and returns it in the Y mm dd format and then we tap on enter and it's going to generate that code for us which means now if we try to get this date time after we import it of course so let's import date time so now we can try to print this we're going to print get current date and we're going to run this so we'll tap on run and at the bottom, we will get that date back. And as you see, we didn't have to do that much typing or at least that much thinking. We just had to think about the specifications and check that the code actually worked. And that's a very simple example of Copilot or AI assisted programming. We can even create something a bit more complex. I'm still getting used to learning how to create prompts. So my uh, code is not really generating at the best of its capabilities. I will learn how to use it better and then I will give some better tutorials on this. But this is just a quick demonstration of what you should start learning because it's going to be really important in the future of programming. So let's create a simple chatbot using Copilot. But first I'm going to stop main underscore two. I don't know why that was running, but here we're going to type in def get bot response. It's going to take a user input of type string and it's going to return to us a string which we can type in manually because right now as you can see if we tap on tab it's going to generate this useless code although we can click on tab or tap on tab and we can remove this and we can edit the doc string so we want to get a response from the bot so first we want to convert the user input and I'm going to make it more specific, convert the user input to lowercase. Then we want to return a response based on the input. So we can just tap on enter there, tap on enter one more time. And as you can see, it's going to give us a code completion. Now, if we tap on enter, we're going to be missing a lot of this. We're missing something called greetings. So this was not really the best solution. So we're going to edit this a bit because what it gave us was something accurate, but we were missing a lot of the code that we needed. So we're going to type in convert the user input to lowercase. Check that the user input matches a given string. Return the response that matches the user input. And we tap on enter and it's going to give us that simple chatbot. 
as you can see, it's going to check that the user input has user input dot lower. And if it's hello, it will return hello, how are you? LF user input is equal to goodbye. It will do that, else it will return the rest. Then we can go down to the bottom. We can check if name is equal to main. And it's going to generate some more code for us based on the context. So let's go back there. And my code generation is now gone. But here it is. We have the code that was generated. First, it's going to print hello, I'm a chatbot as an intro print message. Then with while true, it's going to take the input. And if the user input is set to goodbye, it's going to break. And this is a small error on the part of Copilot because right now we already have some user input here, which means this will never be reached if we use this. So something better to write here would be exit. But the rest works quite well. As you can see, the chatbot is going to respond with the response that we put into the get bot response function. So if we actually run this and we type something such as hello, the chatbot can respond to us. If we say bye, it's not going to understand because we need to say goodbye. And the chatbot will say goodbye. And now we can type an exit to exit out of the chatbot. And I know this was an incredibly simple example of how you could use Copilot, but there are some more complex examples provided on the website, such as parsing expenses. You put an expense string in, you give it some examples, and it does its best to give you a suitable response or some suitable code that you want to use. So that was a bit about how Copilot works in a nutshell. I am going to start doing some more research on how to use it more effectively, but it is important, or at least I found it important to bring up that we do have tools like this now and that as time progresses, it can be a really good idea to familiarize yourself with these tools because maybe right now you can type code faster than a Copilot because you know exactly what you're doing. But in the future, as this becomes more accurate and more reliable, you're going to start noticing a huge transition from manual typing to AI assisted typing. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Do let me know if you have any suggestions of what I can do with Copilot or if there's something you want me to try with Copilot or if there's any other AI assistant out there that you would like me to try or to make a video about. But otherwise, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.